For those of you who don't know me, I am a huge Nintendo GameCube fan. But growing up, I was only limited to the very small selection of games my dad had bought, mostly being your Marios and Zeldas. I didn't get to experience many of the GameCube's other best titles and hidden gems, and with the price of some of these games skyrocketing since 2020, I opted to buy an additional GameCube for the sole purpose of modding it, slapping on ROMs on an SD card, and to back up my childhood favorites before the discs succumbed to disc rot. So here it is, the GameCube I picked up from Facebook Marketplace for the steal price of $20, and lucky for me, one of the easiest mods for your GameCube just released. And luckily, I was one of the first 1,000 people to get my hands on it. This is the Flippy Drive. Let's check it out. I know what many of you might be asking. What's the Flippy Drive? And more importantly, what makes it one of the easiest mods? Let me answer both of those questions. The Flippy Drive, a device made by the group Team Off Broadway, is an optical disk drive emulator for the Nintendo GameCube. It is solderless, can be used in tandem with a working disk drive, and is installed with no physical modifications to your GameCube. And I must say, the installation was a breeze, thanks to the solderless installation of the mod. So let's check out what's inside the kit. Every flippy drive kit comes with the flippy drive, the ribbon cable that makes this whole operation solderless, more on that later, a 3D printed bracket to hold the flippy drive, another 3D printed cap for those that want to outright replace their optical drive with the flippy drive, also more on that later, and a couple of small screws that you use to mount the flippy drive onto the bracket. Okay, now that we have simple introductions out of the way and what's included with the kit, let's get on to the installation, in which we need to access the disk drive port of the GameCube. In order to open a GameCube, you must have a GameBit screwdriver handy, which you can get for cheap off of Amazon. Luckily, a GameBit head came with my iFixit kit. Turn the GameCube upside down, unscrew the four GameBit screws, turn the GameCube back on its feet, and pull the entire top off. Next, pull the back I.O. shield off of the back clips, as well as the front I.O. shield, but be careful as the front I.O. has a ribbon cable that is attached to the motherboard. It's okay to just let this piece hang around after unclipping it. Also be sure to unplug the power supply as we will be unscrewing this piece later since there are a few screws underneath it that is required in order to access the disk drive port. Next, start unscrewing the four front long screws as well as the rest of the 16 other screws around the GameCube. Be sure to unscrew the screws around the power supply as well as the ones underneath it. Luckily, these 16 screws are all the same size, so don't fret about mixing them up in a big pile. Now it's at this point that we should be able to unplug the disk drive from its port. Just gently grab the entire drive and pull up and away from the GameCube. And look at that, the port that is needed for this mod. It's at this point in the installation where we actually start the installation. Grab the ribbon cable from the kit and fold it like so, forming almost a V shape right in here. Luckily, there's better photos of this fold on the instructions page on how to do the installation, which I'll leave linked down in the description below. Next, insert the ribbon cables V into the port and plug the optical drive back into the port, sandwiching the ribbon cable between all of the connectors of the drive port. Also, when placing down the drive, be sure that the rest of the hanging cable slots through the small opening where the metal frame was bent during the GameCube's production, and wrap the ribbon cable around this pole like so. If you're going to be replacing the optical drive, this is where you would plug in the 3D printed cap that came with the kit. Now that we have the drive plugged back in, we can start putting the 16 screws back, but be sure to leave these three screws open as this is where the flippy drive bracket will sit. Just line up the bracket with the screw holes and put the screws back into the GameCube like so. Unfortunately, the bracket covers up one of the screw holes, but fortunately, Team Off Broadway came up with a solution and printed a small screw hole on the bracket that'll hold the extra unused screw. This is in case you ever want to remove the flippy drive in the future. Now time to plug the other end of the ribbon cable into the flippy drive. Be sure to line up the two triangles and snap the ribbon cable into place. Screw the flippy drive onto the bracket with the included screws from the kit, and we are basically all done. Before I put the GameCube back together, I grabbed an extra micro SD card I had lying around, 
Any card over four gigabytes will do. In my case, this is a 64 gigabyte card. I reformatted it to XFAT, slapped the latest software update from Team Off Broadway's GitHub, and put the micro SD card into the flippy drive. I'll leave a link to their GitHub down in the description below as well. Now let's reassemble this GameCube back together and get to using the flippy drive. Since I put the latest software update file onto the root of the SD card, before I power on the system, I'll have to hold the X button on the Player 1 controller. Once the GameCube powers on, it should start updating the firmware. This process took about 15 minutes to install, and once it was done, I was greeted with a familiar GameCube menu. But scrolling up to the game selection, I was greeted with their custom UI, where all the games that you have backed up can be found. I love how this menu just feels so natural with the rest of the GameCube's menu. The special thing about the flippy drive is that it can be used in tandem with the original disk drive. Turning on the GameCube while holding the L button on the Player 1 controller passes control to the original disk drive and will boot up whatever physical disk you put in your GameCube. Holding down the X button when turning on the console gives us this menu, in which we can choose to dump whatever disk we currently have in the system to the SD card. I tried this feature out with one of my favorite Zelda games, Twilight Princess. It took about 30 minutes for this game to dump to the SD card. A slow process, sure, but the fact that I can now play this game without the physical disc is huge for me, especially when the game inevitably stops working one day. It's good to know that I can back up my library now. On top of this, you can still get your games from the internet, slap them onto the SD card, and play them that way as well. I'm so happy that I got to try out a new mod for the Nintendo GameCube, and for as easy as it was to install, I must say it's the easiest recommendation I'll give for a product for those interested in modding their GameCube, especially for those who have never modded hardware before. And this isn't the end for the flippy drive, as Team Off Broadway are still updating the firmware, adding more features like an attachable Ethernet port that can be used to load games off of the PC, and hopefully even recreate the features of the broadband adapter for games like Mario Kart Double Dash, Kirby Air Ride, and Fantasy Star Online, just to name a few. The flippy drive may be my only experience with modding a GameCube, but I must say I love its almost plug-and-play installation process and ease of use for very user-friendly UI. Again, I highly recommend this product, and for those of you who want to preserve your games or just want to keep your GameCube alive for many years to come, definitely check out the flippy drive. I hope this guide slash mini review was a bit helpful for those of you who were interested in the flippy drive as well as those who didn't know what the flippy drive was until now. The purpose of my video was to showcase a brand new mod and a few of its key features that I personally was looking forward to using. If I missed anything, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the flippy drive. If you liked the video, please leave a like and for those of you who want to stick around, consider subscribing and following me over on Twitch. We stream every Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, playing mostly Nintendo games with a few extra games spread out in between. I hope to catch you guys in chat, and until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.